TNT and Lipton Soup presents Inner Sanctum Mystery, starring Simone Simone. Good evening, friends of the Inner Sanctum. This is, of course, Raymond, your host. Uh, please come in, won't you? Uh, make yourself comfortable in any gloomy corner. We had intended to have a real surprise for you tonight. Instead of myself, we were going to have a guest ghost to act as host. But, uh, unfortunately, this real ghost caught pneumonia, and he's in a very grave condition. The doctors have given up all hope. He's, uh, going to become alive. <laughs> well, Mr. Raymond, I must admit, I'm glad that that ghost couldn't come. Mm? It's difficult enough to talk to you, but heavens, I wouldn't know what to say to a ghost. Oh, well, that's simple, Mary. All you have to do is find out whether it's uh, a he ghost or a she ghost. And if it's a she? Oh, well, then you compliment her on her appearance. You say, darling, what a divine sheet you're oh, wearing. <laughs> that's right, Mr. Raymond. Mm. The ladies are always interested in something new to wear. Mm. And right now... I'm going to tell them about something they'll all want. It's a lovely piece of jewelry. A real sterling silver medallion about an inch in diameter. It's the kind of jewelry you find at those smart shops on Fifth Avenue in New York. But the only way you can get it is from Lipton's. The medallion is decorated with a Chinese inscription. And it's hung on a narrow black rayon satin ribbon. That's the height of fashion this year, you know. And here's how you get the medallion. Just send 25 cents and the box top from a package of Lipton's, the tea with the brisk flavor, to the Lipton Tea People, Box 92, New York City. Yes, that's Box 92 in New York City. And uh, now it's time to begin. Our story is called The Black Art. It's an original tale by Milton Lewis. And our star tonight is that glamorous motion picture star, Simone Simone who play the role of Claudine. So uh, gather close and get ready to hear a sweet little tale that'll make you wake up screaming for at least the next two weeks. You all set? Now remember, if you don't want your hair to stand on end, get someone to sit on your head. Okay? <laughs> all right, now, let's, uh, let's hear Larry Gifford tell you his story in his own words. <laughs> I never heard that scream. I wish I never saw a body lying there. Blood all over the room. The knife on the floor near her throat. I'll never forget it. I'll never forget how I picked up the knife. I'll never forget the sweat that came creeping out all over me when I heard the door slam. Stand where you are. If you make a move, I'll blow your head off. Don't shoot, copper. Drop that knife. Okay. What's your name? Larry. Larry Gifford. Look, I'm from Chicago. Stranger, huh? Yeah, what of it? What's her name? Her? I, uh, I don't know. I never saw her before. Look, you don't have to frisk me. I haven't got a gun. Shut up. Listen, I, I know it looks bad, but you see, my room's downstairs. I heard a scream, and I... Give me back that wallet. Yeah. Oh. Your hands up. Roll papers. What of it? So I'm an ex-con, so what? You don't know her, huh? No, I don't. I... What? What have you got there? Just a picture I found in your wallet, mister. Picture of her. To Larry. With all my love, Nancy. Reckon you forgot about this, huh? Yeah, but look, I didn't kill her. I, I Shut I... up. Lucky thing I heard that screaming came up here. Put out your hands. Sure. You can have them. Here. <laughs> Come back here. Come back. Far. The crowd in the streets nabbed me. They got him when I heard the shots and the scream. I was dumped in jail. Now, well, this was a little burg in the bio country, not far from New Orleans. I was the biggest thing that hit the town since Ripley's Believe It or Not. For them jerks, my trial was a bigger show than Carmen Miranda and Gypsy Rose Lee doing a trapeze act. In no time at all, they sentenced me to be hung. <laughs> It was the night before they were going to take me to the state pen for the necktie party. I was sleeping. Dreaming I was in Africa. They were beating them drums. Tom-toms. 
suddenly I woke up. Moonlight was shining through the bars of my cell. I listened. Someone was beating like a tom-tom on the wall of my jail. <whistles> Who is it? Who's doing that? Larry Gifford. Yeah, that's me. Were you beating on the wall? Yes. I'm under your cell window. What do you want? Drop one end of your tie through the bars. Okay. There. I've got it. What are you doing? Pull up your tie. Okay. Got it? A gun? Yeah, yeah, I got it. Good luck. Goodbye. Thanks, baby. Whoever you are. What's going on there, Gifford? Huh? Oh, nothing. Why? I heard talking. Oh, I... I was talking in my sleep. You never done that before. I never was going to be hung before. What's you holding there? Come here, I'll show you. What's that? A gun? Yeah, and it's got enough bullets to fill your head with lead. Let go of it. Open that door. Open it or I'll give it to you between the eyes. Go on. Don't shoot. Stop it. Okay, now I'll take your gun. Give me those keys. See how you like it in there for a while. Stop him! He's near to escape! Let's go! He's near to escape! The Blue Bottle Bar. Someone told me it was a good joint where they don't ask any questions. It was. I had a few drinks. I was leaning on the bar, looking at a paper. What are you drinking? Scotch. Buy me one. I gave her the once over. I know something about Dave, since she was dynamite with class. She was something. Well? Set up another, Charlie. Cigarette? Yeah. Thank you. It's a nice cigarette holder. Must cost at least a C. You know a lot, don't you? Enough. I know you. Do you? Sure. There's something about... Wait a second. Here. Here in this evening's paper, your picture. Oh, it's not a very good picture, is it? After seeing you, no. Claudine Lucin. Recently returned from France. Elected head of art committee. Miss Lucin, member of one of New Orleans' oldest and wealthiest families. I've read it. Turn the page. Why? I want to show you something. Okay. There. Larry Gifford of Chicago, wanted for murder, is sought by police after sensational Jane Blair. Better not read anymore. Why? I feel something against your side. Yes. It's a gun. I'm holding it in my pocket. Don't be afraid. I won't give you away. Got a light? Yeah. What do you want? Listen to that music. That tapping. What about it? The way you're tapping your cigarette holder against your glass. I'm just keeping time to the music. I heard that tapping before. Yeah, sure, in the cell. And I heard your voice before. Did you? You gave me the gun. Shh, let me hear you. Uh, uh... What, what's what's this all about? You'll find out. Relax. I, I can't. I, I I guess I had a few too many. My, my head. I feel like I'm sp spinning around, getting dizzy. <laughs> Two green eyes. Pink with blood around the edges looked at me out of a queer furry head. It was the head of a bat. It smiled. It had sharp little bat teeth that had pink on them. There was an ache in my throat. I looked again. It wasn't a bat's face. It was hers. Claudine's. I was dreaming. Larry? Hmm? Oh, well, where am I? 
My suite at the hotel. Ah, how'd I get here? You passed out at the blue bottle. I brought you here. When? Two hours ago. Oh, I must have been sleeping. I had the queerest dream. I thought... <clears throat> oh, oh. What's the matter? Oh, my, my throat. That pain, like a knife. Those... Those green eyes of yours. That red mouth. Those white teeth. Look, we're going to have a showdown right now. I'm, I'm... Where's my gun? I took it. Look, what do you want with me? Nothing you don't want to do yourself. Don't talk in riddles. Have you... Have you ever been in love? Sure, dames are always falling for me. Why? I, I guess that's what happened to me. Are you kidding? No. Do you think I'd get you out of jail if I were? But I, I never saw you before. I saw you at the trial. That's... That's where it happened. Oh, how can a dame like you go for a guy like me? I don't know. But it happened. I, I don't believe it. I'm sorry. Come here. Yes? I'm gonna kiss you, baby. Larry. Oh, Larry. Yeah, it's a funny thing to do. Kiss a guy on the neck. Better wipe that lipstick off. I can... Hey. What's the matter? My handkerchief, that ain't lip rouge on my neck. It's blood. No, you're making a mistake. My neck's bleeding. What, what kind of a dame are you, anyway? I'm getting out. No, don't. If you go, I'll tell them who you are. Oh, you will. Yes, huh? and I... Oh! You won't tell them for a while, baby. <laughs> Grady's joint in the old city of New Orleans was just a place. She'd never find me in that dump. Nobody'd ever find you there. I got a room. I went to sleep. I was safe. Then I heard it again. That same rhythm. It woke me up. I heard it, but I couldn't believe it. How, how could she know I was here? Or was it her? There's nobody in the room. I opened the door. Nobody outside. I slammed it. The beating stopped. I turned around. It's looking into the muzzle of a gun. Sit down, Larry. <laughs> How'd you get here? My Grady ran to the room next to you. There's a connecting door. What? What's the idea of the gun? Can't you guess? You, you gonna kill me? Maybe. Well, you, you're going to a lot of trouble to bump off a guy who's gonna be hung anyway. Do you want to die? No. There is a way you can live. How? By coming with me. Yeah. What else have I got to do? Marry me. You're right out of your head. You hate me? No. No, I, I, I don't. I don't hate you. I'm, I'm scared of you. Yeah, I, I've never been scared of anybody the way I'm scared of you. Scared enough to do as I say? Maybe. I had hoped you would love me. Maybe I do. You're lying. No. No, baby. <laughs> it's no use. Look, what are you going to do? Kill you? No, put the gun down. Give me a break. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that Claudine's a kid of her words. When she tells someone she's going to kill him, she does it. She'd make a wonderful wife for some Frankenstein monster. She's attractive, a good killer, and she has a well-developed taste for blood. Say, why should I hand her over to some other guy? She's just a gal for me. Oh, nonsense, Mr. Raymond. Why, Mary Bennett, I believe you're jealous. I am not. Yes, you are. You're thinking what a handsome couple you and I would make strolling down the avenue, me dressed in a shroud, and you wearing your new sterling silver medallion. Now, mm. don't you go making fun of my lovely medallion, because I want all the ladies to send in for one. I know they're going to enjoy wearing it, because it's made of solid sterling silver, and it's really a fine piece of jewelry. 
Besides, there's a true story behind this medallion, an inspiring story. It seems that the original was given to an American flyer by Chinese guerrillas who rescued him after he'd bailed out over enemy territory. The flyer was told that the Chinese characters on the medallion would identify him and bring him safely through the lines. Well, he did get through. And only then did he learn that the medallion said, good luck, in Chinese. Now, there's a story to tell your friends. And to get this good luck charm, just like the one the flyer carried, all you have to do is send 25 cents and the box top from a package of Lipton's, the tea with the brisk flavor, to the Lipton Tea People, Box 92. That's Box 92, New York City. Now, uh, let's get back to our star, Simone Simone, who seems to be making life hard for a guy named Larry. Uh, the last time we looked in, she had just shot him. But I've got a tip that that's only the beginning of his troubles. Uh, how about it, Larry? What happened then? I went down in a heap when she fired. The bullets caught me in the thigh. I lay there. I made out like I was dead. Larry. Larry. She fell for it. She bent over me. A gun in her hand. Larry, are you... Oh! Take it easy, kid. Let go of my hand. Not till I get that gun. Let go. Let go. I'll get that gun if I have to break your arm. No, don't... To... Oh. <clears throat> okay. Got it now. You shot me in the leg, but I'm still strong enough to get rid of you. Larry. I'm no angel, baby, but you're worse. Here's something I heard about, but I never believed. How'd you know I'd be here? How'd you know I'd be in the blue bottle? Go on, answer me. I've got nothing to tell you. Oh, you don't have to. It was magic. Black magic. Somebody nobody'd believe if I ever told him. There's only one thing to do with you. Yes? Kill you. But I ain't taking any chances like you did with me. When I kill you, you're going to stay dead. Those tom-toms are going to stop forever. You think so, Larry? I know it. Come here. Larry, Shut I... up. No! I knocked her out cold. She lay on the floor. I put the muzzle of the gun to her temple. She was so beautiful, it made you shiver. I pulled the trigger. I looked. What I saw nearly made me pass out. A little blue vein on her temple was beating. There wasn't a scratch on her. A little curl of red hair was twisted around her ear. Was I seeing things? I aimed the gun at her heart. <laughs> Nothing. Not a speck of blood. I stuck the muzzle between her eyes. Shot till the gun clicked empty. I looked. The white skin on her face looked more beautiful than ever. I had to get away. Out of the same city where she was, out of the same state, the same world. I let out for the open country, to the bayous on the river back in New Orleans. My wounds festered as I dragged myself through the swamps, and I got a fever. It was like a nightmare. In my head, I kept hearing those tom -toms. I couldn't take a train or a bus or go to a doctor. I'd be caught. One night I saw a big house shining in the moonlight. I decided to take a chance. I knocked at the door. What is it? Sorry, miss. I was hunting. I had an accident in my leg. Oh. If you let me come in and call a doctor, I'd be very grateful. You don't want to come into this house. Oh, can't you see I need help? You'll never be helped here. There's nothing good here, only evil and fear. So go away, please. I'm warning you. Go away before my sister comes out. What's the matter with you? Don't you see I can hardly move? Go away while you still have the strength to crawl away. Now, believe me. Tell Mr. Gifford to come in and close the door, Cassie. Uh, that voice. That's my sister. It's your sister. Claudine Lassan. Good evening, Larry. I was wondering when you'd get here. You know him? Yes. Mr. Gifford and I are old friends. Friends. How can you have a friend? Now, Cassie. He's someone like you. You mustn't mind her, Larry. Cassie isn't quite well. I don't know who you are, Mr. Gifford. But I do know that she's brought you here to kill me. Cassie? I knew it would happen on a night like this when the moon was full. She's been preparing for it for months. I've told everyone about it, but no one will believe me. I've told them again and again, and they say I'm insane. They think I've lost my mind. But she is going to murder me tonight while the moon is full. She's going to murder me. She... Oh. Go to your room, Cassie, immediately. How did you get here? I live here. Come, Larry. You must know by this time that you can't fight me. Yes, I... I thought I'd 
never see you again. I'm not, I'm not well. I've got a fever. Hey, that tom tom being in my brain. I can't stop it. It's getting louder and louder. I blacked out. When I opened my eyes again, I was in a soft bed with clean sheets. Someone had dressed my wounds. The moonlight came into my room like a living yellow ghost. Then I heard it. Screaming. Just like the one Nancy made when she was killed. I limped out of bed, went to the room next door. It was Kathy on the floor. Murdered. The knife was still in her neck. And I heard it again. The tom-tom. Queer sounding this time. I felt myself beginning to sway to the rhythm like a dancer. Then I did something I couldn't stop myself from doing. I put my hands down, drew out the knife. I wiped my bloody hand on my shirt. Suddenly I looked up. She was there. Claudine. Drop the knife, Larry. What? What have you got in your hands? These? These came from the skeleton of someone who was once alive. You're not a woman. You're a devil. I'm gonna... Don't come any closer, Larry. I don't want to kill you just yet. Just, just yet? So we're close to the payoff. Yes. You're trembling, Larry. Who are you? There's no reason why I cannot tell you now. You don't believe, do you, that there are unseen powers that can be controlled by someone who knows how? I can believe anything about you. Thank you, Larry. Your heart is pounding like a throbbing drum, isn't it, Larry? You can feel death close, can't you? What have you got to say to me? I'm going to tell you a story, Larry. The story of a child who was brought up on this estate by a strange old woman, a conjure woman. In her head were all the black arts of the world. She taught me. Why are you telling me this? It amuses me to watch you, a murderer, helpless and terrified. So terrified you can hardly breathe. I find it very exciting. Then it, it was blood I found on my handkerchief. Yes. It is one of the ways to gain complete power over a person. And a tonto. Another spell to make you do what I want. And the murder of your sister? You want me to be the patsy for that? You're beginning to understand. You see, Cassie and I inherited the estate. There's really not enough for both of us. You'll tell them I did it. Yes. And that I killed you in self-defense. What, what are you looking at me that way for? I was remembering something. Remembering? Oh, that kiss, baby, wasn't it? You're a devil, but still a woman, ain't you? You didn't forget that kiss, did you? No. Well, what are you going to do? Come here. Closer. Well? Don't move. There. You, you're going to let me live? Live? Well, it's my life against yours, you fool. I'll put that gun down. When I'm finished. Please, give me a break. I'm begging you. Begging you? I'll do anything you say. Just give me a chance, please. Here it comes, Larry. Between your eyes. How do you feel today, Gifford? Much better, officer. Legs healing fine. We checked that crazy story you told us. It's all true. Tell me something. How'd you know to come to the Lucerne place when you're dead? You arrived just in time. A second later and she would have killed me. Kathy, her sister phoned us, told us to come out. I came in the room and saw her threatening you with a gun. I shot at her. I had to. Got her in the shoulder. You should have killed her. The state will take care of that. Did you believe the story she told you at first? That I killed her sister and she was killing me in self-defense? No. You see, Gifford... We'd found out that you weren't a murderer. You didn't kill Nancy Warren. The man who did that confessed. That made her whole story false. How, how did she do it, Captain? How did she find out where I always went? Police psychiatrist said she did, did it by post-hypnotic suggestion. She told you where to go while you were asleep, and you never realized that you were always doing just what you wanted. But the bullets, when I shot at her and tried to kill her, how'd she do that? 
It was all carefully planned. The first shot she fired at you were real bullets. The others in the gun were blanks. She wanted to get you so thoroughly under her power that you think she couldn't be killed. You see, all this so-called black magic has an explanation. Has it? I wonder. <laughs> Oh, that black magic. <laughs> I tell you what I'm going to do. Step right this way, friends, and get yourself a post-hypnotic suggestion. Spell it backwards and you get murder. Uh, what's that? You can't spell. Ain't you lucky? Talking of luck, Mr. Raymond, I think Larry Gifford was mighty lucky to escape that awful woman. Oh, well, you see, Mary, it's very simple. He probably wore one of your good luck medallions. Oh, now, that's plain Uh, silly. A man wouldn't wear a medallion on a black rayon satin ribbon. It's the ladies who like jewelry. Yes, that's why I know that they'll appreciate this solid sterling silver medallion that the Lipton people want to send them. And, ladies, here's how you get it. Send just 25 cents, which includes tax and postage, with a box top from a package of Lipton's, the tea with the brisk flavor, to the Lipton Tea People, Box 92 in New York City. The uh, moral for tonight's assault on your nerves is never marry a dame who sucks blood out of your throat. Such dames give you a uh, pain in the neck. <laughs> By the way, this month's Inner Sanctum Mystery novel is The Red Right Hand by Joel Townsley Rogers. Yes, and don't you dare miss next week's story directed by Hyman Brown and brought to you by Lipton Tea and Lipton Soup. Next week's story is about a pair of murderers who get scared to death. They're more frightened than the guy they're murdering. So if you hear some static on your radio next Tuesday, it'll just be their knees knocking together. <laughs> Well, now I guess it's really time to close that there squeaking door. So, uh, good night for real. Pleasant (laughs) dreams. Folks, the next time you send a box of food to your boy overseas, be sure to include a package or two of Lipton's noodle soup mix. You see, Lipton's is just like a taste of home. Mm-hmm. It has the same homemade chickeny taste as the soup you make yourself. The soup your boy's always been so fond of. That's why it's such a thoughtful, welcome little gift to send Lipton's. And as you know yourself, Lipton's noodle soup makes a grand snack. So remember, send a package or two to your boy. And remember to tune in next Tuesday night for another Inner Sanctum Mystery. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. CBS. <laughs>